Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing below and hitting the like button and sharing with all of your friends and family. Please practice safely and use your better judgment. I hope you have a great workout. Keep moving and be safe. Namaste. So coming into a seated position, whatever's comfortable for you. If it doesn't work for you to sit cross-legged, then find something that does work for you. There's all different ways to sit down comfortably. If you have a yoga block nearby, you might want to sit on the block to get your hips and knees more in alignment with each other. So we're talking about back tension, shoulder tension, neck tension. If the upper body is tight, it's pulling on the lower body. If the lower body is tight, it's pulling on the upper body. So let's focus on the upper body. This is one of my favorite neck and shoulder uh, stretches. If you've done eagle posture before, you'll be familiar with the arms. First of all, open out your arms wide. Bring the right arm underneath the left arm. Then bring your right fingertips to your left palm. If that doesn't work, you can always hold your shoulders because what's the most important part here is the squeezing down. We want the shoulders to move down and away from our ears. Push the elbows together to activate the lats and pull the traps down. Then slowly begin to lift the elbows up and look up. Feel that stretching across your shoulder blades. Then slowly come back to neutral. Try to bring the forearms parallel to the floor. And we don't have to go far. You could be here as well. And you're feeling that broadening across the scapula on the back. Then we'll come back to neutral. First we'll lean towards the bottom arm. So lean to the right. Now what's going to probably happen is the left shoulder is going to want to creep up. We want to keep pushing that left shoulder down. Coming back through the middle. Lower the forearms to the left without letting the shoulders creep up. Mind your elbows. Come back to center and then open out your eagle wings. Feel all the work you did in your shoulders and upper back. Now we'll bring left arm underneath right arm. Bend at the elbows. Left fingers go to right palm or hold your shoulders. Now the fable behind this eagle pose is that an eagle is actually wrapped up by a snake and it's trying to break free. So the important part is the snake is squeezing the eagle. So you need to pull in and down with those shoulders if you can to maximize the stretch. Slowly lift the elbows up, look up, feel the rounding across your back. I usually hold these 10 or 15 seconds in each position. Then bringing the elbows into the chest, lower the forearms. If you don't have the fingertips to the hand, you can always use a towel. Come back to neutral, <clears throat> lower towards the bottom arm. So this time we'll go to the left first. Keep that right shoulder from creeping up. Looking good. Back through center and move it to the other side. Come back through center, open out your arms wide. Shake your arms off. Now let's extend our right leg away at 45 degrees. And we'll get more into the middle and lower back, but we'll also keep those shoulders involved. Bring your left arm overhead, reaching for your right little toe. So palm faces me. Now let's start with the shoulder. Try different hand placements. Turn your hand to face the floor. Turn your hand towards you. Feel the shoulder. 
go around all the way up to face the ceiling. Feel how that gets even lower down by the low back and hip. Just move that arm around a few times. And then sway a little side to side. Safety in mind. Feel the different parts of your low back. Side of your body where the lats are, the rib cage, the muscles in between the ribs that pull on the back all the way up to your shoulder and neck. Feel that whole connection. And then we'll come out. If your arms get numb and tingly, that's fine. As long as there's no sharp shooting pain. Let's swap out sides, guys. And ladies, move to the other side. And then play around with your hand placement on that top arm. And finally sway the whole body just like a mermaid waving or a piece of seaweed on the bottom of the ocean. Okay, then we'll slowly let that go, shake it off. We'll swing our legs around behind us to come up and all, all into all fours. If you feel anything in your wrist too much, um, try to protect your wrist by creating a little space under the palm, as if you stuck your thumb under there and then pulled your thumb out. Create that little space. Also, for our purposes today, just keep your wrist slightly in front of the shoulders. We're going to use a little pressure from the floor so you're pushing into the floor as if you're going to do a push-up but we won't and make some circles tiny little circles with each shoulder getting into the upper back and shoulder area it feels clumsy at first but keep pushing against the floor for the traction both directions Now come to neutral, we'll make some bigger circles. Doesn't matter what side you go to first, but make some full circles all the way around your mat. Stop at the middle and reverse that circle. Mind your wrist. Try to feel all the different parts of your back. Instead of just making a circle, make it more like a sway. So you're in an organic kind of motion here. A Shiva Ray sort of undulation. Very fluid if you can. And we'll come back to neutral once you feel even on both sides. We'll do our full spinal cat and cow. So we're going to hold the first one as we look forward. Press the breastbone forward. And instead of trying to lift the hips and tailbone, try to send them away from your upper body. And then holding for a couple of breaths, cow or cat pose rather, tuck your chin in, tuck your toe bone. Now usually this either gets all sent up by the neck or down in the low back, but try to put it right in the middle of your spine if you can. We'll come into neutral. If you need to give your wrist a break, just shake them off then get back into it and we'll look over our right shoulder for our right hip then lean a little to the left so you're getting a left lateral stretch all the way down the ribs to the hip and low back and then coming through to the other side I usually hold these about three breaths We'll come back to the middle. One way to get the whole back all at once is the, are those twists. 
And thread the needle is a good example of that. Let's shake off that right or left wrist. Doesn't matter what side you start with first. Elbow and shoulder. And then we'll slip that arm under, but before you put the head down, try to take that arm all the way across so the elbow's on the far side of the mat. Keep your shoulder away from your ear as you begin to lay down. Try to lay way over as if you could actually get on your shoulder blade. And before you put the head down, if your neck says it's okay, rotate to look up at the top shoulder, keeping the chin near the chest. And press very lightly into the back of the head and shoulder here. Alternatively, you can always have a seat and pull that arm across with the other hand if that's better for your anatomy. Keep that slow, rhythmic yoga breath going in and out through the nose. Then slowly coming out, whatever arm you had on the bottom, move it all about. Coming into neutral, reach that uh, left arm high, or the opposite arm high, whatever arm you were on, move it around. My left, your right. And then we'll slip it under, trying to get the elbow on the far side of the mat, shoulder away from your ear, shoulder blade near the ground. Revolve your head to look up, chin near your top shoulder and chest. Slowly coming out when you're ready, if it feels like you were on the same amount of time on both sides, and then shaking that arm all about. Swinging your legs forward as you come around, shake those legs off. We'll bring our feet towards each other and scoot our buttocks towards our heels for cobbler's pose. You can also do this seated against a wall. Sit up straight and push those knees down with your elbows. Try to open those hips a little. Hips and hamstrings, one of the biggest problems for the low back. Find that deep breath. My mind likes to race whenever I'm still for a moment, so I replace those thoughts with counting. And counting calms down my mind, but it also lets me know how long I'm in a posture. Maybe that'll help you as well if you have that busy mind. Just know the busy mind is normal. It's not a bad thing. That's just the mind's job. And then slowly release. We'll push those feet away from us and make it about our shoulders and back again as we come forward with your feet farther away from you. Let your elbows rest near your knees and just round the whole back. Instead of just sitting up to come out, 
do some of that organic motions. Maybe you roll your shoulders or let your head move around. I always say the best yoga is just falling down on your living room floor when you get home and rolling around doing whatever the body wants you to do because the body is going to tell you where you need these stretches. If you do that every day, just get home, get down on the floor, roll around, stretch yourself out, you'll feel a lot better. Let's straighten the right leg or left leg and bend the right knee. Keep a distance between the foot and the inner thigh so that you can support yourself without your arms. Normally the low back and neck wants to do all the twisting. So as you twist to look over your back shoulder, try to send the twist to that middle spine. Deep breath. Taking our time to come out, shake that off. We'll recreate that on the other side. A nice little easy twist, making sure the middle back is doing the workload for us. Coming out slowly. Dandarasana, staff pose. One of my favorite ways to get that low back to loosen up and also to strengthen the upper body. Place your hands next to your hips. We want the wrists just in front of the shoulder cap so that we're not hyper flexing our wrist. And without lifting your bum off the ground, just push into the ground as if you were going to lift up off of the floor. You might feel that extra little space created in the low back. You can even rock a little forward and back. And as you push the shoulders down, feel your arms working. If it's hard for you to feel that push, you can put two flat yoga blocks underneath each hand. And then we'll relax. Now, usually this next stretch is about the legs. We don't want to forget the legs, but as we come forward first, before we make it about the legs, make it about your upper body. So let the back round and let the legs move around. Shoulders can shrug and circle. And then as you come into stillness, We'll make it about the upper body and the lower body. And then as we come out, we'll get ready to wrap up and we'll do one final upper body shoulder stretch. You can cross your right knee on top of your left knee. You could stop here if that's where you need to, or if you lean onto the left hip, swing the left foot to the side without sitting on it. So you have both your knees crossed for Gurmukhasana or stop wherever you need to. For our purposes today, we're not really worried about the lower body. If you are sitting like this, it's just like Eagle. The purpose is to squeeze your legs together. 
Then bring your same arm as the top knee, so your right hand in the middle of the back. You can do two things. You can reach around behind you, and if the fingers clasp, the bottom fingers have to pull down. If you can't get that leverage with the bottom arm, then just reach up overhead. Pull the elbow back and down a little. Try to sit up straight, pushing into the hips. Your neck should feel neutral, not bent forward. Make some tiny little circles with the top elbow. That's a very active pose. Circle the top elbow in the other direction, feeling that shoulder. And then to get more of that lateral body again, lean away from the elbow. So towards your left side, if it's your right elbow behind you. Come back up, reach up. Both arms reach for the sky. Support yourself, lean back, cross the other leg on top. Whether you need to stop with the bottom leg straight or bring it to the side without sitting on it. Same arm as the top leg goes behind you. Either find your clasp from behind, bottom arm pulling down, or hold that shoulder from above. Sit up straight, no pressure in the neck. Push down into the hips. Tiny circles, top shoulder. Both directions. And lean away from the top arm. Take your time to come out. Straighten out those legs, give them a good shake off. Before Shavasana, we'll interlace those fingers and push the arms up overhead. Look up, feel the shoulders open. You may need to cross your ankles if you feel like you're going to fall over or take your legs wide. Lean to one side. Look down at the floor. Come back to center. We'll lean to the other side. Cross the other ankle on top if you need to or take those legs wide. and slowly come out. Sliding down your mat, bend the knees, and slowly lower yourself down. Now another reason that our back can hurt pulling on those upper body muscles as well as the low back is the hip flexors in the front. One of the best poses for that is bridge. Lifting up, feet one foot distance apart, shoulders pushing straight down. Then lift up enough that you don't over arch your back. So we have that pelvic neutral concept we worked on before. Our belly's engaged slightly, but we're getting that stretch in the front hip flexors here, right in the front pockets of your pants. A lot of times if we work the arms down towards our feet, we're exposing the back of the neck to some pressure. So rather than working your hands down to your feet, push your shoulders straight into the floor to lift up a little more, making sure your neck feels safe. Then slowly release and kick out. And before Shavasana, I suggest you do, just like I said, your living room yoga. Just move around however you need to move around. And then as you're ready for Shavasana, bring your arms at your side. And before we drift off, let's get those shoulders again. Squeeze your shoulder blades together on your mat like you're trying to pinch your mat with your shoulder blades. Puffing out the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Bring in a big breath. 
And as you open mouth, exhale, let go of everything. I'm going to leave you in Shavasana and I encourage you to stay there as long as you can. We take a deep breath in of gratitude for ourselves. We take a deep breath in of gratitude for each other. And we ask for peace and understanding in the world, our neighborhoods, and our hearts. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaste. Have a beautiful weekend. Stay safe. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Yogi Troy, Troy Cox. I've been practicing meditation and teaching yoga for 20 years. My yoga teacher, Amrit Desai, says that yoga is popular, but what's popular is not yoga. I like to emphasize the fact that safety first is important in any new endeavor, and particularly in yoga. You should make sure that your yoga teacher is qualified and certified and has been practicing teaching many different types of bodies and students so that you are practicing safe yoga under their guidance. Safety first. Pay attention to your body and listen to it. I come from a lineage of teachers who believe in yoga postures. But they follow and approach the idea that the body should lead you into the postures. Your body's never wrong. It'll never lead you astray. Your body wants you to be healthy and safe. Listen to your body when practicing yoga. So find me online. You can Google Yogi Troy, check out my website or Facebook, give me a call and let me teach you safe yoga. I've taught yoga around the world and I'd love to teach safe yoga to you.